Painkiller franchise is a series of games much in the same vein as Serious Sam, giving the player lots of explosive weaponry and seeing them up against legions of brain-dead enemies in large arena-like environments. The first game in the series was developed by People Can Fly and released in 2004 for Microsoft Windows. It could be summed up as a pseudo old-school shooter with satisfying gunplay and impressive visuals, with similar mechanics across its five expansion packs. In the first game, you take on the role of a guy named Daniel, who kills himself and his wife in a car crash when he takes his eyes off the road like an absolute moron. Daniel ends up trapped in purgatory and is enlisted by an angel named Samael to go forth and kill four of Lucifer's generals. After defeating the first general, he meets up with a woman named Eve, who does little more than offer up fan service by having her tits out the entire time. You would expect this kind of thing to be a bit tongue-in-cheek, but the story actually tries to take itself seriously, pulling off the whole grim, dark and edgy thing, often falling flat on its face. I said I'm fine. Okay, okay. Each chapter of the game takes place in a different environment, each with entirely different enemy sets, and ends with a boss fight against one of the generals. There's five or so levels per chapter you have to blast your way through, and they roughly take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to finish each. You will move through a haunted asylum, battling zombified inmates. You will visit Venice and go up against bikies armed with Tommy guns. There's an opera infested with ninjas and samurai, a cathedral full of spooky looking axe throwing monks, and a train station with swarms and swarms of World War I era soldiers armed with bayonets. So top points for originality. And this is a gorgeous looking game, even by today's standards. The game runs at a silky smooth 60 frames per second without any frame rate drops pretty much the entire time, and the engine can support all kinds of carnage at any one time. Chunks of blood, explosions, particles whizzing in every single direction, it looks amazing. Much like the Serious Sand games, the engine is brilliantly optimized and still holds up. I guess I should mention the soundtrack as well. It's made up of all these catchy heavy metal tunes that sound like something from a game like Quake 2. In terms of shooting, it's standard fare. You use the mouse and keyboard to move around and you generally have your finger on the left mouse button the vast majority of the time. Movement speed is somewhat slower than you'd like for a game with such an old school flair, but you can bunny hop around, which is always fun. The weapon roster is also surprisingly creative, consisting of a shotgun, a rocket launcher and minigun combo, a state gun and the eponymous painkiller weapon as well. The state gun is great at nailing bad guys against nearby walls and the shuriken launcher cuts through enemies quite quickly. The rocket launcher and minigun combo is easily the best weapon in the game and when you're fully stocked up on ammo, this thing makes you nigh unstoppable. All of the weapons have ultimate fire modes, giving the shooting loads of depth. The shotgun, for instance, can fire a freezing projectile, turning enemies into blocks of ice, making them much easier to shatter and kill instantly. Enemies quite often explode in a shower of blood and guts when killed, and it's common to have areas stained with arterial chunks in a matter of seconds. To add to the mayhem, you've also got this sort of demon power where your screen goes all black and white, and everything you click on just implodes and dies instantly. Now this happens when you collect 66 souls dropped by enemies. It's a cool idea, but you have no control over it, and it can end up getting wasted. Like, you know, say if it happens when you're around no enemies. This kind of stems into the game's other mechanic, which is the tarot card system, where you can use a series of one-off abilities per level, like increased damage or slowing down time. There's also passive cards that are always active, you know, things like increasing your health or reducing the amount of souls required to access the demon form. The requirements for unlocking these cards is often ludicrous, like killing every single enemy in a level, as an example. Some of them aren't entirely useful either, and they also require gold to be activated, which is something you collect in each level. The only cards worth collecting are the ones for increased damage, and that's only so you can use them against the bosses. Now, Painkiller is often loud as being some sort of masterpiece or first-person shooter classic, and I'm always a little bit bewildered by that. People who talk about it talk about it like it's the second coming of Christ. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a good game, sure, but it's got all manner of annoyances and problems. Glaring faults that stick out like a dog's balls. <sighs> How do you know all this? For starters, the pacing of the game is just horrible. There's no real progression in the difficulty as you move through the campaign and it just kind of goes up and down in between each stage. The level design is also really frugal with the weapon placements and it takes a long time before you get your hands on all the available weaponry. Also, moving on to the next area involves killing every enemy in your vicinity and there are times when a lone enemy is just stuck in a corner somewhere, causing you to spend, you know, five or so minutes looking for the bastard. And then there's the boss fights, which are just fucking atrocious and stand out as another really weak element in the game. 
they always follow an often clear strategy, but that strategy doesn't always work seamlessly. And a lot of the bosses also have these nigh unavoidable attacks that can kill the player in a matter of hits. The areas you fight the bosses are also full of destructible objects. Again, another way the game uses physics to great length. But when these objects are destroyed, what you're left with is huge chunks of, you know, rock or stone literally blocking your path. You often get boxed in a certain area, making yourself an easy target. Another thing that brings my blood to a boil is how every time you take a melee hit from an enemy, the screen goes all hazy for a few seconds, during which the frame rate also takes a dive into single digits. Hitboxes are extremely tiny, and for certain weapons like the state gun and rocket launcher, you have to be pixel perfect with your aiming, or else shots will just whiz right by enemies. I mean, I've had times where I've fired a rocket into a big cluster of enemies, and it's just magically gone straight through all of them. Compare that to something like Serious Sam, where you could just fire rocket after rocket after rocket into a group of bad guys, and it would hit dead on the mark every single time. Obviously these aren't game-breaking bugs or anything like that, but they are issues with the game overall. And considering this is a game where you are shooting things 99% of the time, they will become more noticeable the more you play. But overall though, you can't really fault the gameplay here. I mean, minor issues aside, this is still a largely skill-based shooting game that you will learn to adapt to as you play through the campaign. It's the kind of stuff that will put hair on your chest, and it's one of the few shooters to offer up a genuine difficulty. Now, Painkiller eventually had five, that's right, five expansion packs. And these were in order, Battle Out of Hell, Overdose, Resurrection, Redemption, and Recurring Evil. With the exception of Battle Out of Hell, these were all developed by different teams. Battle Out of Hell was released in 2004, and in my opinion, its biggest problem is that it has gone way overboard on the hit-scanning enemies. Hit scanners are fine if they're in small doses. There's plenty of hit scanners in a similar game like Serious Sam, the first encounter but they're thrown into the game while somewhat sparingly. If they're in abundance, it makes it just unfairly tricky because you can't really avoid being hit by them. It did get some things right though. The new bolt gun weapon is extremely fun to use. It's kind of like a burst fire version of the state gun with a scope. It can also fire bouncing ball bearing type things that do massive damage. There's a certain level where you're up against robots with fish tanks for heads and big-breasted blonde bimbo nurses, and nailing them to the wall with this thing is very entertaining. Another new weapon is the machine gun slash flamethrower combo, which would be a lot better if the rifle didn't fire so intermittently. But these are both inventive and show off the creative flair that People Can Fly also had in the first game. The cinematics also show much more visual detail and the characters don't look like storefront mannequins anymore. Some of the new environments are great too. There's a really fun tongue-in-cheek level set in a very Troma-esque science lab and one in a sort of dark gothic amusement park complete with roller coaster ride that are both real standouts. Overall, this expansion, it ain't so bad. Overdose was the next expansion and here's where the shit starts to thicken. It was released three years after Battle of Hell in 2007 because, you know, people totally ask for a new expansion pack. Juicy. And has you play as a half-angel, half-demon named Belial. Belial is something of a trash talker in contrast to Daniel, but it seems he only knows two or three jokes, because that's all you hear him repeating throughout the entire game. Tastes like chicken. Overdose is at least somewhat interesting. I mean, the new weapons are definitely fun to use, and they're all demonic variants of the guns from the previous game. Like the shotgun, for instance, now fires bone shards instead of pellets, and the painkiller is replaced with something called the razor cube. There's three chapters with about six levels each, and some of them are quite inventive. And overall, it's pretty long, you know, roughly five to six hours. But this game is single-handedly crushed by what may be the worst loading times I think I've ever seen in a game. I mean, just look at this. Just how long does this go on for? Two and a half fucking minutes. And this happens every single time the game has to load. In a game series where you're frequently dying, to spend two minutes each time staring at a loading screen is just utter bullshit. There is no excuse for this kind of thing, and it also happens with the following expansion packs as well. Now you can fix this by forcing V-Sync off within the control panel, but as a result, you have to put up with screen tearing and overheating your GPU, because the game runs at several hundred frames a second. If only that was the biggest problem, but there are a lot of other issues with balancing once again. You know, enemies with magical projectiles that seem to home in on the player, and other enemy types that span these unavoidable, noxious gas-type attacks. 
and finally just crappy level design, often leaving you without ammo for the most basic weapons. Next up was Painkiller Resurrection, which was released in 2009 and again follows a new protagonist named Bill, a hitman who blows himself up when a contract goes wrong and is sent to hell. And then... It was created as something of a fan-made map pack and it shows. Throughout the six new levels, you'll notice the design is absolutely horrible. Convoluted, confusing and full of bizarre, obstructing pieces of geometry that hinder your movement. You'll frequently see enemies stuck in walls or unable to find a path to the player. It reeks of being unfinished and it's dull and boring to play. On a plus side, the levels are much more opened up and less linear, but this also means that it's often very hard to tell where the hell you're supposed to go next. You end up wandering around these large, ugly looking environments trying to find the next area to spawn in more bad guys. Yeah, this game is ugly, especially for a 2009 game. I mean, just look at it, it's horrid. Bill would return again in the fifth and final expansion pack, Recurring Evil, developed by Nordic Games and released in 2012. Again, this is a pretty lackluster experience. This time they've tried to make it seem much more hardcore by throwing literally five or 600 enemies at you a level. Whereas before in the other games, the maximum was usually around two or three. The level design is very simplistic. This time it's a series of small rooms where you just find yourself bombarded from every single direction by dozens of enemies. There's no theme to it anymore, it just seems like they've given up. I mean, one of the levels is set on a destroyed highway, and yet for some reason they've included lots of the children enemies from the orphanage level in Battle Out of Hell, as well as medieval zombies. It just seems out of place. By this point, the visuals look downright prehistoric. This was released in 2012, and I mean, just look at it. Some of the levels look like something you'd expect from a PlayStation 2 game. Actually, you know what? No, that's an insult to PlayStation 2 games. If you're going to give this expansion a try, which I would not recommend, then also say goodbye to your frame rate as well, as the engine just can't handle the amount of stuff going on during larger encounters, not by a long shot. Fire a rocket into a cluster of enemies and you'll see what I'm talking about. The other expansion was Painkiller Redemption, which doesn't even work on Windows 7, but if the quality of the other expansions is any indicator, then there's really nothing worth seeing here anyway. So wrapping all of this up, if you had to play one of these expansions, I would think the only one worth getting into is Battle Out of Hell and maybe Overdose. All they really serve to do though is just make the original game look so much better by comparison. And on that note, I would ultimately recommend Painkiller, the original game that is, to anyone who is a fan of the shooting genre. And like similar games like Zero Sam, it's one of those unabashedly hardcore old school style shooting games that doesn't pull its punches and offers up a lengthy campaign that is sure to kick your ass in a good way. Out of all the games I've ever reviewed on my channel, I would think Painkiller is easily one of the most requested, and there is a reason for that. So if you haven't played it, now is the time to grab a copy and find out for yourself just why that is.